Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, I am going to explain how to solve problems like this where you have a composition of two trigonometric functions. So, um, one of the prerequisites of getting to this point and being able to do well is that you know the simple chart of trigonometric um, ratios, like you have to know cosine 30, cosine 0, cosine 180 degrees. You have to know those things, basically the unit circle. But say you don't know the unit circle, um, there's still a way out for this one, okay? But it's just faster if you know the unit circle. So say you don't know the unit circle, well, you can use a triangle. You just have to make a right triangle every time you get a problem like this. Let's go first to a fundamental concept of what you call inverse functions. So look at the first example. It's a composition of cosine and the inverse function of cosine. So remember that the inverse function of cosine undoes what cosine does. So if you give, for example, let's take an example here. Say I say cosine of 60 degrees is equal to one half. Well, if I try to, if I say, oh, I took the cosine of an angle and my answer was one half. What is that angle? Well, I'm saying I want you to reverse the process. So I give you the inverse function and I get tell you that it's one half. What is the angle? Well, the angle is 60 degrees. Okay. So that's basically what happens when you compose cosine and arc cosine. What usually happens is that you get the original back. So the cosine of this composed with this is going to give you this back. So just watch this. The cosine of the inverse cosine of one half. Let's assume we didn't do anything on top. We just have this composition just as what we have on top here. What is the inverse cosine of one half? Well, it's 60 degrees. So this entire thing is an angle because what you feed into the cosine function is always an angle. So this is 60 degrees. What is the cosine of 60 degrees? It's one half. So generally, when you compose a function with its inverse function, what you get is the original argument of uh, the composition. So look at this. You compose cosine with the inverse function of cosine, and this is the argument. Your answer is just going to be one half. And the same is true if you change the order. So let's say we take an example like this. Let's say the question was flipped, and it was the inverse cosine of the cosine of say pi over four, for example. No, 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 you can, yeah. So let's leave it this way. So now you see that I give you an angle as the argument of cosine, and I want you to find the inverse cosine of what you're gonna get. Well, based on what we have learned, your answer is basically pi over four, which is 45 degrees. Now, how, how, how do you get this? Just look at this. What is the cosine of 45 degrees? It's gonna be square root of two over two. So we're going to do this. What is the inverse cosine of square root of two over two? Well, it's going to be pi over four because that is the angle that will give you root two over two. And that's what you have. So you see, you always get back the original argument if the two functions you are composing are inverse functions of each other. Okay, that's essential. If they are not inverses of each other, this rule does not apply. Okay, so this is the fundamental rule of inverse composition. Okay, you're composing inverses means you get your original value back. Now, this, well, it will not work because this is not a composition of inverse functions. Sine and cosine are not inverses, or an arc cosine are not inverses. So the rule will not work here. You have to know something else. The rule will not work here. It will not work here. It will not work here. Okay, so I just told you the simplest part, and that part is gone. Let's go to the next one. Okay, 
For this second question, um, because the two of them are not inverses of each other, you have to say, okay, do I know what angle um, will give me, the cosine of which will give me two thirds? You don't know that angle. Okay, you don't unless you have a calculator that's going to tell you. So when you get a situation like this where you don't know what this angle is, what you tell yourself is, this is an angle, that angle is going to be theta. So the next line of this expression is actually sine theta. If you know what theta is, you will get your answer. So let's go look for what theta is. We don't know what it is, but we're going to build a triangle. Build a triangle, a right triangle, in which this is theta. And from what we have seen here, this theta is such that if you take the cosine of it, it's going to be 2 over 3. And remember the definition of cosine. It is adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent over hypotenuse is adjacent over hypotenuse. That's 3, sorry, 2 over 3. So this is 2. So now this is the angle that we're talking about. We don't know what that angle is yet, but we know that the cosine of this angle is 2 over 3 because the arc cosine of it is 2 thirds. Okay, I mean the arc, arc cosine of uh, 2 thirds is going to give us back that angle. So now this is the right triangle from which this expression was taken. Now what do we need? We just need to find sine theta. Now we really don't need to know what theta is because we just want to find sine theta. So what is sine theta? It is opposite over hypotenuse. So now we don't know the opposite, but we can find the opposite using Pythagorean theorem. So we're going to go, um, what's Pythagorean theorem for this? Well, this is going to be 3 squared minus 2 squared. And then we take the square root. Okay? It is the square root of the difference between the hypotenuse and the other leg. Okay? And what we have here is going to be... The square root of 9 minus 4, that's square root of 5. So, we can find our answer. Sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, square root of 5 divided by 3. You see, we did all of these without knowing what theta is, and you don't need to know what theta is. Okay, now sometimes if you're lucky, they give you a very comfortable or convenient number and you can know what angle you're talking about. But in this case, you don't know. But we found our answer. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Let's go to the next one. The same principle we're going to apply to this one. For this question, because I know the unit circle, I know that the angle that will give me square root of 2 over 2 has to be pi over 4, or what you call 45 degrees. Okay, I know that. And I know that the tangent of 45 degrees is 1. So the answer to this problem is 1. Okay, let's say you did not know that. What you have to do again is to say, okay, this is an angle. That's what this is going to give me because I need to find the tangent of an angle. So read it, the tangent of an angle. So there's a theta here again. Okay. We just want to know what the answer is going to be. So make an, a triangle again, a right triangle. And your theta is going to be here. But one thing we know is that there's an angle theta such that the sine of that angle was what gave us square root of 2 over 2. Now go to this and use the definition of sine. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse, square root of 2 over 2. Okay, now... What do we need? We need to find the adjacent because the tangent of an angle is opposite over adjacent. So we need to find the side. And we're going to find the side by just taking the square root of the square of this minus the square of this. So this is going to be 2 squared minus the square root of 2 squared. Well, that's going to give us 4 minus 2, right? What's going to be under this is going to be, this is going to be 4 and this is going to be 2. What is 4 minus 2? That's 2. So that's square root of 2. So what's under here has to be square root of 2. Okay, let's clean this up. 
So this is the square root of 2. Now let's take the tangent of this angle. Remember the tangent of an angle is opposite over adjacent, which is going to be square root of 2 over square root of 2, which is 1. You see that? So this is going to be 1. And that's it. Now, like I said, if you know this unit circle, you don't have to draw the triangle, especially if they give you a nice um, argument like this. In this case, this was not a nice argument because it's not on the unit circle, so you still have to draw the triangle. So ultimately, for this topic, drawing the triangle is your best option. Just leave a triangle permanently drawn, and every argument you get, go plug it in there. Let's go to something a little different this time, number five. Okay, I said number five, I meant number four. For number four, we're looking for the arc cosine of, this is not, this, the result of this is not an angle, it's actually a number, okay? So we're gonna get a number from here. However, this is where it becomes difficult if you don't know the unit circle, because in this case, there is no escape. You just have to know the unit circle. Okay, so um, the solution to this is, you ask yourself, what is tan pi over six? Tan pi over six is tan 30 degrees. And if you're used to the unit circle or you know what you're doing, you should know that this is going to be, um, what is tan pi over 6? Square root of 3 over 3 or 1 over square root of 3? Let's write the rationalized form. So this is going to be the arc cosine of square root of 3 over 3. Okay. Now. Which angle will give you square root of 3 over 3? Well, as far as cosine is concerned, there is no nice angle that can give you this kind of answer. Okay? There is no nice angle that can give you this kind of answer. So if the tangent of an angle is square root of 3 over 3, what is the cosine of that angle? Because of the peculiarity of this number, it's not going to be nice. You'll have to use a calculator. So I'm going to say use a calculator. Okay, I put this question there so you know that sometimes the number is not nice. You'll be required to use your calculator to find this. Because square root of 3 over 3 is 1.732 divided by 3. I think that should be 0 0.577 one or something. I hope I'm correct. I'm just going to check it out. Okay, remember this is in radians. And we can convert this to degrees by uh, multiplying it by 180 and dividing it by pi. We're going to end up with um, something like 54.8 degrees. Okay, so that's approximately 54.8 degrees. So that's why it's not really nice. I know it's close to 60, but it's not exactly 60. So that's what we get. So let's go to the very last question, cotangent of arc cosecant, no, arc secant of square root of 2. Let's see what this actually looks like. Okay, for the very last one, let's do it. So we're saying that if you take the secant of an angle, you're going to get square root of 2. That's how you read this. You take the secant of an angle, you're going to get square root of 2. If you want to get the angle back, we're going to take the inverse secant or the arc secant of square root of 2. Well, we don't know what this is. It's not on the unit circle. Secant is not on the unit circle. So we're just going to draw a triangle. Okay? So we draw a triangle, and this is theta. Remember that secant is the inverse of cosine. So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Now, this is going to be hypotenuse over adjacent. But the question you ask is, that's not a fraction. Well, that's... Yeah, not a fraction, but we're going to write it as if it was the square root of 2 over 1, which is the same thing as the square root of 2. Okay? So, this is now your... Um, remember, secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. 
So secant is this over this. So this is going to be the square root of 2, and this is going to be 1. And by that, we can find the opposite end by just subtracting the square of 1 from the square of the square root of 2. So this is going to be the square root of the square root of 2 squared minus 1 squared. Well, this is going to be 2 minus 1. That gives you 1. So this is the square root of 1, which is equal to 1. So this side is 1. This side is 1. This side is square root of 2. And now we can easily find the cotangent of theta. Well, the cotangent of theta is the reciprocal of the tangent of theta. And what is cotangent? It is adjacent over opposite because tangent is opposite over adjacent. So what is adjacent over opposite? It's 1 over 1. So that's going to be 1 over 1, which is equal to 1. I hope you learned something in this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, leave a positive comment in the comment section, and I'll see you in the next video. Don't stop learning, because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.